Hi, my name is Sarah. Thank you for tuning into this video. In the last couple of weeks, I've started taking my YouTube channel into a direction that I've always wanted to go with it. Even though I got my start on this channel talking about kind of new age spirituality and uh, conspiracy kind of stuff, and then took a major sharp turn into an unfortunate cult experience in India, and then kind of dedicated my channel to exposing that cult. And don't worry, those of you who watch that stuff, I'm still going to keep making videos about that too. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, I've started making videos where I'm just drawing and talking. And for me, this is my favorite activity. It's always been my favorite activity. Art is something that I consider not only therapeutic, but essential for my happiness. Uh, if a day goes by that I don't draw or paint or make something, I feel like it's a day wasted. Now, what's interesting is that years ago, back in 2012, I posted a couple of videos where I was drawing and that led to the creation of a coloring book. This coloring book, Color Your Way to Creative Consciousness. And I self-published it back in 2013 and, you know, I use something called Create Space, which no longer exists. Now the self-publishing forum is like Kindle Direct. Um, anyhow, long story short, some of you have commented under my new drawing videos saying that I should make a coloring book. Now, this book got shit reviews on Amazon, pardon my language, but I read through the reviews that some people left and I feel really bad about this like guilty like I want to give these people their money because I didn't realize uh how shoddy the printing is by Kindle Direct or or by Create Space or whoever printed the copies of this book but it sucks um the image quality that I scanned and sent in and yeah I'm trying to defend myself a little here I, I scanned high resolution, like 1200 DPI scans of my drawings, so I expected them to be printed with crisp, clean lines and, and looking professional. Uh, but instead, how it's turned out is like this. So here's a page in my coloring book, and it looks pretty good from a distance, right? But if you get really up close, uh, that's not the camera being out of focus. That's actually how the lines look. They're kind of blurry and kind of gray. Um, being an optimist myself, I don't necessarily see that as, um, what's the word for it, as like a deal breaker for this coloring book uh, because I, I'm like Bob Ross, like there are no mistakes in art. There's only happy accidents. Uh, so how would I turn like a gray pointless looking dot matrix blurry line into a positive, I would say that because of that, the lines can be overdrawn in whatever color you choose and you're not limited by a solid black line in your drawing. Now, the title of this video is an honest review of my own coloring book. So I'm just gonna get right into it. A lot of the pages are super highly detailed I'll, I'll give an example of that by showing you one of the super highly detailed pages, the very first illustration. Super highly detailed. Um, that would be a lot of fun for somebody to color who just wants to color. Then a lot of the pages have tons of white space, like this one here. That's on purpose. Basically, the center of that inner circle can be used to draw something of your choice, all the white space around the outer circle, it's not meant to stay as white space. The whole idea of awakening your creative consciousness is that you're not limited by the lines I've drawn. You draw into it and develop it into your own composition. Um, in fact, I even deliberately left the last two pages totally blank, so that, but with a border, um, so that you can draw your own picture. I grew up in an education family. My granddad was the director of curriculum for the local school district. My mom is a teacher. My auntie Mary Lynn is a teacher. 
And one of the things my Auntie Mary Lynn said when I was a little kid has kind of stuck with me as part of my art philosophy, even to this day. Uh, she said that she would never give her elementary school students a coloring book or coloring pages because it's like putting a cap or putting a limitation on their creative expression. The moment a teacher tells you stay within the lines, um, color it the color it's meant to be, like there's a certain set of colors you can use in the beige to brown tones for skin. There's a certain set of colors you can use in the green tones for grass or brown if you live where I do and it's we're still coming out of winter. Um, when you give somebody a bunch of lines and you expect them to fill those lines in in a certain way, it's not really art that they're doing, right? It's like a, it's an assignment. It's a project. Uh, but when you give some abstract kind of doodles, some designs that have no rules to them, even the form of drawing doesn't have any rules, then it gives you the possibility to just burst out with your own creative ideas in an endless sort of a way. So I made this coloring book not as a standard coloring book, but as like a jumping point for people to explore their creativity. And to be fair, as much as there were some crap reviews on Amazon, there were also some five-star reviews. And those are absolutely my favorite. They're so touching. Um, they, they make me feel better about the negative reviews. Um, somebody commented that they brought the book into a prison and that the prisoners actually enjoyed working with it and felt um, meditative and, and really took the book for what it is, not just flat coloring, but they got really creative and started drawing into it. Uh, the part of me that still kind of wants to go back to university and become an art therapist uh, feels very um, satisfied. Like I have job satisfaction in that kind of a comment. Um, other people said that it got them started on their own journey into drawing and abstract composition. That's like, again, I feel job satisfaction. My honest review of this book, knowing, like I'm biased guys, because I, I love my drawings. I have so much fun drawing like this. I would give it a four out of five. Um, because this kind of page doesn't bother me the way it might bother somebody who expects like mandala style art where the whole page is filled. I know my intention going in wasn't to fill each and every page, but to, to leave blank spaces to draw into it. Uh, the reason even knowing that I wouldn't give it five out of five is just simply because of the print quality. I think it's unfortunate that the self-publishing forum I used didn't give an option to sharpen up the images. Like, it's too bad whoever does the quality check doesn't, um, it's probably not even a person. It's probably done by machine. Uh, but it's too bad they didn't use the same resolution of picture that I uploaded. Um, I kind of expected they would. And again, like, as much as I love these images, as much as the, the gray dot matrix can be a happy accident. Um, I do still kind of wish that it was the solid black lines that I originally drew and I originally scanned. Uh, so I would dock a star for that. Um, if I was somebody who just loves to color and I ordered this coloring book thinking it was just like any other coloring book, I would probably give it like two or three stars because maybe um, maybe 15 to 20 out of the 50 illustrations would fit what I wanted, uh, but it would kind of feel like something like this would just be confusing as heck, because if you look up close, uh, the lines don't actually connect. A lot of them are left open. The point of that is to leave room for possibly blending colors or, or finishing the drawing as you wish, you know, maybe extending those lines or wrapping them around. Again, it's not meant to be, my lines aren't meant to be taken literally, they're meant to be um, worked into. I gave my mom a, co a copy of this book and this was her favorite page. I put a little bookmark. Uh, she colored hers in. I wish I had her copy here to show you, but it's at her house. 
Uh, she colored it all in with felt pens that are in bright highlighter type colors and it wound up looking like a 1970s black light painting. It looked really cool uh, the way she took that page and colored it in. I've also marked out uh, a page that I drew into myself. So this page here, I'll just show you. Let's go to that. So what you're looking at here, I already uh, darkened the grayscale dot matrix lines. And you can see I did that kind of thick with a heavy pen stroke. And then I just went for it. Um, anybody who loves to doodle would love to do this. I've done a typical abstract sort of a freestyle doodle. Um, but if you love representational art, you could take, say, like the central image and turn that into a flower or do like a weird Dr. Seussical kind of a cartoony landscape in the background. Like uh, you could do so many different things with these pages that are left predominantly blank. Um, I had a lot of fun with this and I wasn't as... Uh, delicate with it as I am with my typical drawings. I just wanted to demonstrate how you can totally fill in a page with super easy lines and kind of make it look cool at the end and turn it into something that's more fun to color than just a, a page with a few, you know, little smaller details. Um, I also have a lot of fun when I do these kinds of drawings looking at them afterwards because as I'm drawing it, I don't have any vision in mind of what it should look like or any kind of pre-plan to the composition. So things like these concentric circles I just did, afterwards they might wind up looking like rainbows or like bullseyes or like um, dartboards. Like who knows what color you would want to color them in with. Um, stuff like these big swooping marks could be clouds. That could be like a, the Eye of Sauron for the other Lord of the Rings nerds out there. That, that one thing that looks like an eye coming out of a tower. I didn't even see that until now when I'm looking back and doing this uh, voiceover piece. And by the way, I'm going to pat myself on the back here because up until this video... I've had iMovie on my iPhone, but I haven't known how to use it. And so my videos are always just um, one take, talking, drawing, and then that's it. I think I might play with this a little more. This is my very first ever edited video after years and years and years of uploading non-edited videos. Hope you like it. So yeah, that there are a number of other pages in this book with minimum detail that you can draw into yourself. And there are a lot of pages with small little details where if you don't feel like spending hours coloring, but you've got like 15, 20 minutes and you want to do a little something, you can do a little something like this. So this is just one of many pages that have multiple little drawings all together on one page. I think of them as looking like kind of outer spacey floral designs, like flowers that might grow on some distant planet in another star system. Uh, but that's just my mind that loves fantastical things. You can interpret them however you wish. They could also be like undersea, crazy detailed little symmetrical starfishies. I don't know. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to color in one of these as an example. Um, I've kind of limited my color palette to blues, purples, pinks, and peaches, but and a little bit of green. But the kind of curved lines would look super cool filled in with rainbow colors. I wanted to demonstrate a bit how uh, when you overdraw the grayscale lines with the color that you're coloring in the form, like I was doing right there with the purple, um, it makes the grayscale into a plus, not a minus. Like you can really take the black lines out by coloring over them in this book. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, I really like the way this one turned out. It'll look cool when all the other ones are finished too, but I'm not gonna color those. I'm going to leave those uncolored. Uh, so whoever buys this book, which I'm going to put up for sale on my Etsy shop, um, with the changes I made to it, with that page fully drawn in and with this one little detail colored, and I've signed those pages. Um, whoever buys it can finish that work and hopefully they'll send me a picture of what it looks like when it's done. Anyhow, 
I've also uh, put a little bookmark on my favorite page, which is this page here. Might not look like much, but when I colored it in myself, I turned it into the cover image. Um, I've kind of demonstrated, I didn't do a video of myself painting this in, I wish I had. It was years ago, but it's kind of an example of where you can use little dots of other colors kind of contrasting each other or add more little lines in the color, do some blending. Um, I have a lot of fun with this. I hope you do too. I had actually disabled this book on Amazon so it became unavailable because it was published using a name that a fraud guru had given me that was kind of like my cult name. I didn't want that out there anymore. The little blurb about me on the back is highly outdated. It was written at a time when I was still kind of indoctrinated into a belief system that I now think is BS. Um, and unfortunately, since it was published as that, I can't change that information. But even still, I have re-enabled this book. It's back by popular demand uh, because so many people were commenting that I should make a coloring book. So there you have it. I have given access back to the old one that I made years and years ago. Um, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can order it on Amazon if you want to. Um, and this particular copy where I drew into one of the pages and where I colored one of the little floral shaped um, mini images on one of the pages, I'm going to put this very book for sale in my Etsy store and it will I'll ship it myself. Um, whoever buys it, I'll write a little dedication on the on the front page, like a little whatever note you want me to write. Just just tell me if you want a little personalized note. If not, I'll just sign it and date it and put a heart or something. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll put this up in my Etsy shop, the original artwork, and otherwise the book will be there on Amazon. And I've also started work. I wasn't going to even show you this in this video, but how can I not? Um, I've started work on my next coloring book. I'm hoping to have it published, self-published, by the end of this uh, quarantine time, using more uh, detailed kind of painterly pictures that I've been doing recently. Um, I think the one thing, this is one of my favorites, I did a video where I drew that, I think the one thing I would have changed about my old coloring book if I could make any change to it is that I specifically drew the pictures with the intention that they would be colored in so they're not as detailed as my typical art. Um, here's another picture I just recently finished that I absolutely love. So that book didn't really have any super um, fine line kind of details. It was more drawn with the intention that it could be added to and doodled into and colored. The next one is going to be a bit more detailed. So stay tuned, subscribe, like this video if you, if you approve of coloring as a creative expression. And very shortly I should make another video showing you all the images that are going to go into the next coloring book which I'll self-publish without all the cult-related BS or kind of silly mumbo-jumbo that was in the last one. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.